Hey, thanks for watching this video. There's more at Embark Online. You can tweet me, and there is the pie guy. All right, this is third grade, module seven, lesson 22. And in this lesson, we're kind of clumping together perimeter and area. We're organizing our thinking with line plots. So we're kind of bringing in line plots as well. Parents and teachers, the real point of what we want to do with our third graders is have the students truly understand what is perimeter, what is area, how do you find them, what's the difference between the two, and the point of this line plot is also to say that there really is no connection between area and perimeter. Just because we know the area doesn't mean that's going to tell us something about the perimeter, and vice versa. We really want the students to see that perimeter and area are two distinct things. So let's get started. All right, so parents and teachers, here is, we're going to uh, a line plot, and we're going to ask our students a bunch of kind of thought-provoking questions. Um, you know, don't get overly wrapped up if your students are struggling with answering these questions. Use it as a formative assessment opportunity to kind of guide your future conversations. To um, So don't really stress too much about this particular lesson. The idea is we've got a whole bunch of perimeters here, a perimeter of four, all the way up to a perimeter of 30, and the X's represent how many different rectangles we were able to build with that particular uh, perimeter. For example, a perimeter of four, we were only able to build one rectangle, uh, whereas a perimeter of 30, we were able to build one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different rectangles. All right, so why are all the perimeters even? Why are they all even? Well, the idea would be, well, we know that no matter what rectangle we build, and I'm going to try and draw it. Oh, let's draw it right here. So whatever rectangle we try and build, we know it's going to have a length and a width, and then it's going to have another length and a width. So we know that the perimeter is always going to be two times the length plus the width. And since it's always going to be two times, it means it's always going to be even. So that's why it's always going to be even, is because the perimeter is two times the length plus the width. All right, so I'll write that down. Perimeter is equal to two times the length plus the width. And that two times makes it even. The next question, explain why the explain the pattern in the line plot. What types of side lengths make this pattern possible? So since we notice, what's the pattern in the line plot? Well, the line plot is 4, 6, 8, 12, so they're all even numbers. What types of side lengths make this pattern possible? Well, we're dealing with whole numbers. We're only dealing with those little those centimeter squares. So the length and the width are whole numbers. They're always whole numbers. That's why we keep getting the kinds of answers that we're getting. And then the next one is how many X's would we draw for a perimeter of 32? So if we were to put 32 right here, how many X's would we have? Well, that's kind of what we were doing the last couple of lessons, which is if the perimeter is 32, that means in our rectangle, that means that the length plus the width is 16, and the other length plus width is 16, because that's how you're going to get 32. So 32 divided by 2 gives us 16. So the length plus the width has to equal 16, so that when you double it, you get 32. So length, oops, so length plus the width has to equal 16. So what are all the combinations that give us 16? Well, length could be 1, and 15 gives us 16. We could do 2 and 14 gives us 16. We could do 3 and 13 equals 16. 
We could do 4 and 12 equals 16. We could do 5 and 11 equals 16. My goodness, we could do 6 and 10. We, we're just creating this big old huge long list here. So 6 and 10 is 16. We could do 7 and 9 is 16. We could do 8 and 8 is 16. Ah, then we're done. Because at that point, we found them all. There are eight combinations that are possible to have for a perimeter of 32. All right, so here we've got Luis, and Luis uses square inch tiles to build a rectangle with a perimeter of 24 inches. So we know that we have a perimeter of 24 inches inches. And does knowing this help him find the number of rectangles that he could build with an area of 24 square inches? All right. Well, the short answer is no, because 24 inches of perimeter versus 24 square inches in area these guys are not connected in any way, shape, or form. There is no relationship between a perimeter of 24 and an area of 24. Now, parents and teachers, the fact that that number is 24 in both cases and, and that here it's inches, but here it's square inches, I mean, a lot of this is kind of like magic to our students. So uh, we need to help our students really have this deep understanding that perimeter is a linear measurement. It's a length. It's the string that goes around the rectangle, whereas area is um, a square. We're measuring it in square units. It's the number of square centimeters or square inches, square tiles uh, that make up 24, so 24 square tiles. So they're just two totally different things, and we need to help our students understand that there is no relationship between the two. And the last slide, Esperanza makes a rectangle with a piece of string. She says that the perimeter of her rectangle is 33 centimeters. Explain how it's possible. So all of a sudden, explain how it's possible for her to have a rectangle with an odd perimeter. So a lot of our perimeters that we've been talking about have been even, and that's because we've been using um, whole number tiles. We've been using a bunch of little tiles and each of those little tiles we move around and, and that's why we always end up with whole um, even number perimeters. So how is it possible that we can have an odd perimeter? Well the idea is if you take a piece of string, and so here's my piece of string, and if we were to wrap or coil that string in, uh, into a rectangle, right? So if I were to take this 33 centimeter long piece of string, and if I were to coil it up and make it into a rectangle, well, what would the perimeter be? Well, the perimeter would be 33 centimeters long. And that's how it's possible for us to have a rectangle with an odd perimeter. You start with an odd length string, you make it into a rectangle, now you have a perimeter that is 33, in this case, 33 centimeters. So that's how it's possible. Another way to say it is, well, it's possible because you can have sides of a rectangle that are fractions. You can have a fraction on each of these. You don't have to have whole number. You can have some sort of fraction and you piece those fractions together and that's how we get an odd number. And that wraps up third grade module 7 lesson 22. We're kind of piecing areas and, rect and perimeters together. We're organizing our thinking on line plot. Fun stuff.